I think the Azores must be very little known in America. Out of our whole ship's company, there was not a solitary individual who knew anything whatever about them. Some of the party, well read concerning most other lands, had no other information about the Azores than that they were a group of nine or ten small islands far out in the Atlantic, something more than halfway between New York and Gibraltar. That was all. These considerations moved me to put in a paragraph of dry facts just here. The community is eminently Portuguese, that is to say, it is slow, poor, shiftless, sleepy, and lazy. There is a civil governor appointed by the King of Portugal. There is also a military governor who can assume supreme control and suspend the civil government at his pleasure. The islands contain a population of about 200,000, almost entirely Portuguese. Everything is stayed and settled, for the country was 100 years old when Columbus discovered America. The principal crop is corn, and they raise it and grind it, just as their great-great-great-grandfathers did. They plow with a board slightly shod with iron. Their trifling little harrows are drawn by men and women. Small windmills grind the corn ten bushels a day, and there is one assistant superintendent to feed the mill, and a general superintendent to stand by and keep him from going to sleep. When the wind changes, they hitch up some donkeys and actually turn the whole upper half of the mill around until the sails are in proper position, instead of fixing the concern so that the sails could be moved instead of the mill. Oxen tread the wheat from the ear after the fashion prevalent in the time of Methuselah. There is not a wheelbarrow in the land. They carry everything on their heads, or on donkeys, or in a wicker-bodied cart whose wheels are solid blocks of wood, and whose axles turn with a wheel. There is not a modern plow in the island or a threshing machine. All attempts to introduce them have failed. The good Catholic Portuguese crossed themselves and prayed God to shield him from all blasphemous desire to know more than his father did before him. The climate is mild. They never have snow or ice, and I saw no chimneys in the town. The donkeys and the men, women and children of the family all eat and sleep in the same room, and are unclean and ravaged by vermin, and are truly happy. The people lie and cheat the stranger, and are desperately ignorant, and have hardly any reverence for their dead. The latter trait shows how little better they are than the donkeys they eat and sleep with. The only well-dressed Portuguese in the camp are a half-dozen well-to-do families, the Jesuit priests and the soldiers of the little garrison. The wages of a laborer are twenty to twenty-four cents a day, and those of a good mechanic about twice as much. They count it in a raise at a thousand to the dollar, and this makes them rich and contented. Fine grapes used to grow in the islands, and an excellent wine was made and exported, but a disease killed all the vines fifteen years ago, and since that time no wine has been made. The islands being wholly of volcanic origin, the soil is necessarily very rich. Nearly every foot of ground is under cultivation, and two or three crops a year of each article are produced. But nothing is exported save a few oranges, chiefly to England. Nobody comes here, and nobody goes away. News is a thing unknown in Fayal. A thirst for it is a passion equally unknown. The Portuguese of average intelligence inquired if our civil war was over, because, he said, somebody had told him it was, or at least it ran in his mind that somebody had told him something like that. And when a passenger gave an officer of the garrison copies of the Tribune, the Herald, and Times, he was surprised to find later news 
in them from Lisbon than he had just received by the little monthly steamer. He was told that it came by cable. He said he knew they had tried to lay a cable ten years ago that had been in his mind somehow that they hadn't succeeded. It is in communities like this that Jesuit humbuggery flourishes. We visited a Jesuit cathedral nearly two hundred years old and found in it a piece of the veritable cross upon which our Savior was crucified. It was polished and hard and in as excellent a state of preservation as if the dread tragedy on Calvary had occurred yesterday instead of eighteen centuries ago. But these confiding people believe in that piece of wood unhesitatingly. In a chapel of the cathedral is an altar with facings of solid silver. At least they call it so, and I think myself it would go a couple of hundred to the ton to speak after the fashion of the silver miners. And for it is kept forever burning a small lamp. A devout lady who died left money and contracted for unlimited masses for the repose of her soul, and also stipulated that this lamp should be kept lighted always, day and night. She did all this before she died, you understand. It's a very small lamp and a very dim one. It could not work her much damage, I think, if it went out altogether. The great altar of the cathedral, and also three or four minor ones, are a perfect mass of gilt gimcracks and gingerbread and they have a swarm of rusty, dusty, battered apostles standing around the filigree work, some on one leg, some with one eye out but with a gamey look in the other, and some with two or three fingers gone, and some with not even a nose left to blow, all of them crippled and discouraged, and fitter subjects for the hospital than the cathedral. Well, the walls of the chancel are of porcelain, all pictured over with figures of almost life-size and very elegantly wrought and dressed in the fanciful costumes of two centuries ago. The design was a history of something or somebody, but none of us ever learned enough to read the story. The old father reposing under a stone close by, dated 1686, might have told us if he could have risen but he didn't. As we came down through the town, we encountered a squad of little donkeys, ready saddled for use. The saddles were peculiar, to say the least. They consisted of a sort of sawbuck with a small mattress on it, and this furniture covered about half the donkey. There were no stirrups, and not really such supports were not needed. To use such a saddle was the next thing to writing a dinner table. There was ample support clear out to one's knee joints. A pack of ragged Portuguese muleters crowded around us, offering their beasts at half a dollar an hour. More rascality to the stranger, for the market price is sixteen cents. Half a dozen of us mounted the ungainly affairs and submitted to the indignity of making a ridiculous spectacle of ourselves through the principal streets of a town of ten thousand inhabitants. We started. It was not a trot, a gallop, or a canter, but a stampede and made up of all possible and conceivable gates. No spurs were necessary. There was a muleteer for every donkey and a dozen volunteers besides, and they banged the, monk the donkeys with their goad sticks and pricked them with their spikes and shouted something that sounded like sicky ya and kept up a din and a racket that was worse than bedlam. These rascals were all on foot, but no matter. They were always up to time. They can outrun and outlast a donkey. Altogether, ours was a lively and picturesque procession and drew crowded audiences to the balconies wherever we went. Blucher could do nothing at all with his donkey. The beast scampered zigzag across the road and 
others ran into him he scraped blucher against carts and the corners of houses the road was fenced in with high stone walls and the donkey gave him a polishing first on one side and then on the other but never once took the middle he finally came to the house he was born in and darted into the parlor scraping blucher off at the doorway after remounting blucher said to the muleter now that's enough you know you go slow hereafter but the fellow knew no english and did not understand so he simply said siki ya and the donkey was off again like a shot he turned a corner suddenly and blucher went over his head and to speak truly every mule stumbled over the tool and the whole cavalcade was piled up in a heap no harm done a fall from one of those donkeys is of little more consequence than rolling off a sofa the donkeys all stood still after the catastrophe and waited for the dismembered saddles to be patched up and put on by the noisy muleters blucher was pretty angry and wanted to swear but every time he opened his mouth his animal did so also and let off a series of brays that drowned all other sounds it was fun scurrying around the breezy hills and through the beautiful canyons there was that rare thing novelty about it it was a fresh and exhilarating sensation this donkey riding and worth a hundred worn and threadbare home pleasures the roads were a wonder and well they might be here was an island with only a handful of people in it twenty-five thousand and yet such fine roads do not exist in the united states outside of central park everywhere you go in any direction you find either a hard smooth level thoroughfare just sprinkled with block lava sand and bordered with little gutters neatly paved with small smooth pebbles or compactly paved ones like broadway they talk much of the rust pavement in new york and call it a new invention yet here they've been using it in this remote little isle of, a, of the sea for two hundred years every street in horta is handsomely paved with the heavy rust blocks and the surface is neat and true as a floor not marred by holes like broadway and every road is fenced in by tall solid lava walls which will last a thousand years in this land where frost is unknown they are very thick and uh, are often plastered and whitewashed and capped with projecting slabs of cut stone trees from gardens hang their swaying tendrils down and contrast their bright green with the whitewash or the black lava of the walls and make them beautiful the trees and vines stretch across these narrow roadways sometimes and so shut out the sun and then you seem to be riding through a tunnel the pavements the roads and the bridges are all government work the bridges are of a single span a single arch of cut stone without a support and paved on top with flags of lava and ornamental pebble work everywhere are walls 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 and all of them tasteful and handsome and eternally substantial and everywhere those marvelous pavements so neat so smooth and so indestructible and if ever roads and streets and outsides of houses were perfectly free of any sign or semblance of dirt or dust or mud or uncleanliness of any kind it is horta it is fayal the lower classes of the people and their persons and their domiciles are not clean but there it stops and the town of the islands are miracles of cleanliness we arrived home again finally after a ten-mile excursion and the irrepressible muleters scampered at our heels through the main street goading the donkeys and shouting the everlasting siki ya and singing john brown's body in ruinous english when we were dismounted and it came to settling the uh, shouting and jawing and swearing and quarreling among the 
mule tears and with us was nearly deafening one fellow would demand a dollar an hour for the use of his donkey and another claimed half a dollar for pricking him up another a quarter for helping in that service and about fourteen guides presented bills for showing us the way through the town and its environs and every vagrant of them was more vociferous and more vehement and more frantic in gesture than his neighbor we paid one guide and paid for the mule tour for each donkey the mountains on some of the islands are very high we sailed along the shore of the island of pico under a stately green pyramid that rose up with one unbroken sweep of our feet to an altitude of seven thousand six hundred thirteen feet and thrust its summit through the white clouds like an island adrift in a fog we got plenty of fresh oranges lemons figs apricots etc in these azores of course but i will desist i am not here to write patent office reports we are on our way to gibraltar and shall reach there in five or six days out from the azores